This series begins with an alien ship arriving in the year 1609, just as a princess named So Yi Wa is walking in a procession. At that time, Yi Wa becomes a widow shortly after getting married because her husband passes away. One day, as Yi Wa is being carried on a stretcher, a strong wind from the alien ship blows her stretcher away, almost sending her falling into a deep pit. Suddenly, time freezes, and a man named Do Min Jumin appears to rescue her. Now, in the present time, Min Jun is sharing his story of how he came to Earth in 1609. He has been living here for over 400 years, adapting to all the changes the world has gone through. He has extraordinary senses, being able to see and hear things seven times better than regular humans. However, despite his abilities, he prefers not to help humans because he wants to keep his distance from their lives. Min Jun learns that the comet which brought his alien spacecraft will return in three months, so he plans to return to his planet when it does. Meanwhile, on the set of a movie, a popular actress named Qian Song Yi was using social media when she made a mistake in her post. This led to many people making fun of her online, which made her agency head, An Dong Min, very angry. He was frustrated because Song Yi often makes these kinds of mistakes on social media. However, he couldn't do much to scold her because she's the most famous actress in South Korea. While returning home to her new apartment, Song Yi meets Min Jum in the elevator. Since he's going to the same floor, she mistakenly thinks he's a stalker. When they both arrive at their floor, Song Yi is surprised to find out that Min Jun lives right next door to her. Meanwhile, Song Yi's mother, Yum Mi Yan, is spending time with other wealthy women, including Han Sun Young, who is the mother of Song Yi's rival actress, Yu Se Mi. At that time, Mi Yan boasts about Song Yi in front of her friends, but she also tends to spend Song Yi's money recklessly. That night, Min Jun couldn't sleep because he heard Song Yi singing loudly in her apartment. He told her to quiet down, but she was surprised because she thought her apartment had good soundproofing. A little later, Min Jun heard Song Yi crying because people were being mean to her on social media. So he decided to go to the basement and write about his time on Earth before going back to his home planet. The next day, Dong Min asked Song Yi to go to college to improve her reputation. After some convincing, Song Yi agreed even though she didn't really want to because she already felt successful. Meanwhile, Lee Hee Kyung, a rich guy and a good friend of Song Yi, just arrived in South Korea. He really likes Song Yi, even though she always turns him down. On the day Song Yi goes back to college, Hee Kyung accompanies her to campus, where they find lots of journalists waiting to talk to her. In class, Song Yi is surprised to find out that Min Jun is her lecturer. She hopes to get some special treatment from him but he tells her that humans always want more, even after receiving help once. Later that night, Min Jun meets with Jung Young Mok, his lawyer and friend who knows all his secrets. There, Min Jun shares that he's leaving for his home planned in three months, leaving Young Mok feeling sad about their upcoming separation. The next day, Hee Kyung, Song Yi, and Se Mi were having dinner together. Suddenly, Hee Kyung asked Song Yi to marry him. This surprised Se Mi because she had feelings for him for a long time. However, Song Yi said no because she's still waiting for her first love, who saved her 12 years ago. On the other hand, Min Jun revealed that he couldn't return to his home planet until he meets Yi Wa again, who once gave him a gift. Flashing back to 12 years ago, when Min Jun worked as a doctor, he met her again, who had been reincarnated, and saved her from a truck accident. Now he wants to find Yi Wa once more before leaving Earth. Then, after meeting with Young Mok, Min Jun went back to his apartment and bumped into Song Yi in the elevator. Suddenly, he recalled his mission on Earth, which was to study humans without them knowing. So he disguised himself and blended in with people by going to a market where he noticed some shady gambling going on. Knowing it was unfair, Min Jun decided to help a man who kept losing because of cheating. One night, he also saved Yi Wa from danger and gave her a hairpin, which is now in a museum with other old stuff he donated secretly. Fast forward to the present, Song Yi, who's a bit full of herself, joins him in the elevator. Then, while he slept, Min Jumin had a strange dream about a woman falling from a ship in the future. He told Young Mok about it, who suggested he should help people in need before leaving Earth. But Min Jun refused, feeling guilty about helping a man win at gambling, which led to the man getting addicted and desperate enough to consider selling his daughter. Since then, Min Jun regretted helping humans. On the other hand, Seimi tried to stir up drama between Song Yi and another actress, Hun Yu Ra, by spreading rumors that Song Yi stole Yu Ra's jobs. During class, Song Yi turns in an assignment that her manager, Yun Boom, had done for her. 
but it turns out she copied articles from others and Mean June notices. This embarrasses her in front of everyone, including reporters. At that moment, Song Yi feels really down, especially since her friend Mi Yan keeps asking her for money. Meanwhile, Hee Kyum works at his dad's company, without revealing his true identity to anyone, not even you, his boss. Later that night, while Mean Chun is chilling at home, a drunk Song Yi tries to enter his apartment, mistaking it for her own. When Mean Jun opens the door, she stumbles in and falls asleep on his couch. There, He Kyung finds out she's there and rushes to take her back home. On his way home from Song Yi's place, He Kyung bumped into her older brother, Jake Kyung, outside their house. While they were chatting, Jake Kyung received a call from a woman asking to be let go urgently. The next day, Mean Jun found Song Yi's wallet left behind in his apartment. He was surprised to see a photo of Yi Wa, whom he had been searching for for 12 years. Meanwhile, Song Yi was at the salon when Yu Ra approached her, furious because she felt Song Yi had taken her job. Just as Yu Ra was about to hit Song Yi, Mean Jun stepped in to stop her. But Yu Ra, still emotional, told Mean Jun not to interfere and used her strength to break all the salon lights, scaring everyone. Mean Jun then took Song Yi outside and asked about the girl in a wallet, while Song Yi mistakenly thought he had taken her wallet. Transported back to the year 1609, Yi Wa questioned Mean Jun's true identity and thanked him for helping her many times. At that time, she invited him to rest at her house. But when he arrived, he found out that everyone thought she was dead. Even her in-laws had made a grave for her. Sadly, Yi Wa decided to return to her parents' house, and Mean Jun finally took her there. In the present day, Song Yi proudly declares herself as the most famous actress in Korea and asks Mean Jun if she resembles the person he's looking for. He stays silent but notices her shoes, which are similar to the ones the woman wore in his dream. There, Song Yi explains that they're limited edition shoes that only she owns. This makes Mean Jun more convinced that she might be the woman from his vision. After meeting Song Yi, Mean Jun tells Young Mok about it. Upon hearing that, Young Mok thinks Song Yi could be the reincarnation of Yi Wa. So Mean Jun starts thinking about whether he should help her or not. The next day, at Hee Kyung's office, he can't stop thinking about Mean Jun whom he met when he picked up Song Yi. He feels like he's seen Mean Jun somewhere before. Later, when it was time for him to leave work, he was about to go home, even though another employee was staying late. He got scolded by the manager, but luckily, Yu stepped in to stop the manager from being too harsh on Hee Kyung. After the incident, Yu advised Hee Kyung to change his computer screen photo from Song Yi's to a family photo. And he also asked him to buy coffee for everyone working late as an apology. Innocently, Hee Kyung did what you suggested, surprising his colleagues with a family photo that made them realize Hee Kyung was actually the head of the company. They immediately invited him over after he brought the coffee. On another occasion, Hee Kyung told his brother Jae Kyung that none of the employees knew his true identity yet. Unlike Hee Kyung, Jae Kyung is secretly very ambitious and willing to do anything to achieve his goals, even if it means harming his own father. At Min Jun's apartment, he hears Song Yi groaning in pain from a stomachache. When she's about to leave for the hospital and sees Mean Jun coming out of the apartment, she asks him to go with her. At the hospital, the doctor is surprised when Mean Jun diagnoses Song Yi with appendicitis and insists on immediate surgery. Before going into the operating room, Song Yi asks Mean Jun to wait for her, and he takes care of her until her family arrives. During this time, he pretends to read her horoscope in the newspaper and warns her to avoid ships and be careful around water based on her zodiac sign. The next day, when Hee Kyung and Saini visit, Song Yi asks for a newspaper to check the zodiac prediction Mean Jun supposedly read for her, but she doesn't find it. After her friends leave, Song Yi calls Mean Jun and asks him to borrow some comics from her friend's shop, which annoys him at first, but he eventually agrees to help her out since she's sick. Meanwhile, Song Yi's younger brother, Chin Yoon Jae, finally arrives at the hospital. When he sees Song Yi, they argue because he always believed their family fell apart because of her wealth. Mi Yan, who craves attention from the media, brings some reporters with her, injuring Song Yi, who kicks them all out of her room. Outside the hospital, Song Yi's father, Xian Mingu, initially plans to visit his daughter but changes his mind when he sees Yoon Jae leaving the hospital. Meanwhile, Song Yi thinks back on her memories with her father while still in her hospital room. The next day, Song Yi is discharged from the hospital but she's upset because she can't find her heels. She suspects Mean Jun took them since he noticed her shoes the day before. Because of that, she confronts Mean Jun, accusing him of taking them. 
Upon hearing that, he denies it, but when he gets back to his apartment, he finds her heels in his shoe rack. Meanwhile, at a diner, Yu Ra is having dinner with Jade Kyung. She asks him to marry her right away so she won't reveal his secret about his ex-wife. At that time, Jade Kyung looks worried after hearing the threat and starts planning something in response. The next day, Song Yi gets ready at the salon for her friend's wedding. She realizes her favorite shoes are missing, so she buys new ones that look very similar to her old ones. Meanwhile, Min Jumin is at a payphone when he sees news about Song Yi's friend's wedding. There he spots her at the party wearing the same dress and shoes as in his dream. But this reminds him of something that happened before when he was assisting Yi Wa. It didn't turn out well because when he brought her back home to her parents, they felt embarrassed, and Yi Wa's mother almost hurt her. Yi Wa's father also plans to make Min Jun miss his alien ship, which makes Min Jun reluctant to help humans. Later, while relaxing at home, Min Jun watches a TV interview with Song Yi, where she talks about her first love, who helped her when she was young, and she expresses her desire to meet him again. Sixty hours later, after the boat party ends, Yu Ra's body is found on the riverbank. She had disappeared during the party, sparking an investigation led by Detective Park Byung-hee and Prosecutor Yu Suk. Going back 60 hours earlier, while the party was still happening, Song Yi and Yu Ra were fooling around during a photo session with the bride. Soon after, Song Yi accidentally witnessed an argument between Jade Kyung and Yu Ra in the bathroom. She discovered that Jade Kyung is Yu Ra's boyfriend. Trying to ignore this, Song Yi returned to the main room carrying Yu Ra's bag left in the bathroom. As the main event was about to begin, Sami saw Song Yi, who appeared drunk, on the second floor of the ship just before it shook. But when Sami looked again, Song Yi had vanished. After the event ended, everyone got worried because Song Yi and Yu Ra were said to be missing on the ship. Hee Kyung, who was concerned, eventually found Song Yi sleeping in one of the rooms. Then he quickly woke her up and took her out of the room. In the present, rumors are swirling that Song Yi is responsible for Yu Ra's death leading reporters to gather near her apartment. Panicked, Song Yi tries to escape and ends up rushing into Min Jun's apartment when he opens the door. She decides to hide there for a while to avoid the reporters, especially after snooping around his secret room and reading his diary. However, Min Jun catches her and forces her to leave. Meanwhile, Jae Kyung learns from his trusted friend, Lee Sin, that Yu Ra had a recording of their conversation on the ship, and it's in Song Yi's handbag. Back with Song Yi, she talks to Min Jun about Jae Kyung and Yu Ra fighting, and assures him that she couldn't have killed Yu Ra, despite their arguments. Meanwhile, Byung Hee and Yu Suk were checking the surveillance footage from the ship. They noticed Min Jun, who wasn't on the guest list, and were surprised to see him vanish when the ship shook, along with Song Yi who went missing. It turns out Min Jun teleported onto the ship and stopped time to save Song Yi from falling when the ship shook. He then took her to a room. At that time, Song Yi, who was drunk, kissed him, thinking she was dreaming. As Min Jun left the room, he overheard Jake Kyung and Lee Sin talking. In the present, Min Jun watches the news about a light in the sky, recognizing it as an alien ship. He looks worried, remembering when the alien ship left him in the past. Everyone on Earth was amazed to see it. On the apartment balcony, Song Yi tells Min Jun that she moved there so she could see her billboard in the building next door. She explains that only top actresses get on billboards and that achieving her dream of becoming a famous actress has always been her goal since childhood. Meanwhile, outside the apartment, Hee Kim buys fried chicken for the reporters to get them to leave. He also tries to spread news about Song Yi to shift the blame away from her. Inside, Song Yi watches jealously from the screen door, but Min Jun refuses to buy her chicken, telling her to go to bed instead. In Yu Ra's room, Lee Sin sneaks in and leaves a letter hidden in one of her books for her family to find. The next day, Min Jun is frustrated to find his living room messy because of Song Yi, so he tells her to clean it up. Suddenly, Young Mok walks in and is surprised to see Min Jun and Song Yi together, thinking they have a special relationship. There, Young Mok claims to be Min Jun's father and brings lunch, inviting them to eat together. He's happy to see Min Jun interacting with humans. Meanwhile, Byung Hee tells Yu Suk that Yu Ra's death case is closed as harming herself based on her note, and autopsy results showing she took antidepressants. However, Yu Suk continues investigating because he found footage from the salon where Yu Ra and Song Yi argued, showing all the lights suddenly breaking when Min Jun appeared. Meanwhile, as Min Jun was heading home from work, he noticed Song Yi's advertisement being taken down. When he reached the apartment, he tried to stop Song Yi from leaving after finding out the reporters had left. 
He did this to prevent her from seeing the billboard being taken down. Soon after, Song Yu received news that Yu Ra's note had been found, leading many to believe she had made Yu Ra depressed. Later, after Song Yi returned home, Min Jun started feeling lonely and kept imagining her in his apartment. As for Song Yi, her career took a hit after Yu Ra's death. All her advertisements and drama roles were cancelled, and even her favorite salon turned her away. Frustrated, she invited Se Mi to eat fried chicken with her and shared her disappointment. Just then, Se Mi received a message saying she would replace Song Yi as the main character in a drama, but kept it a secret from her. Meanwhile, Jade Kyung, who knew that Yu Ra's bag was in Song Yi's apartment, contacted her and said he would visit her. While Jade Kyung was in the apartment parking lot to meet Song Yi, Min Jun met him and planned to follow him. Unfortunately, Byung Hee arrived and took Min Jun to talk about Yu Ra's death case. In Byung Hee's car, Min Jun remembers who Jade Kyung is and starts to worry about Song Yi's safety. Without thinking, he rushes out of the car and runs towards the apartment. At Song Yi's apartment, while she's getting drinks for Jade Kyung, he searches for Yu Ra's handbag but can't find it. He returns to the living room to avoid suspicion. After chatting for a bit, Jade Kyung leaves when Hee Kim arrives. Meanwhile, Min Jun sees Jade Kyung monitoring the elevator on the CCTV and rushes to check on Song Yi. However, annoyed by Min Jun and Hee Kyung's presence, Song Yi kicks them out. The next day, eggs are thrown at Song Yi's car as she heads to Yu Ra's funeral, blaming her for Yu Ra's death. At her agency office, Song Yi overhears Mi Yan scolding Dong Min for canceling her contract due to Yu Ra's death. There, Song Yi decides to terminate her contract with the agency. Shortly after, Song Yi and Mi Yan quickly left the agency office and bumped into Se Mi and Sun Young. Se Mi finally revealed that she was offered to replace Song Yi as the main character in a drama. Surprisingly, Song Yi didn't seem bothered and even encouraged Se Mi not to miss out on the opportunity. However, Se Mi felt sorry for Song Yi as she got the role after the public turned against her because of Yu Ra's death. Back at the apartment, Song Yi was shocked to find a threatening gift with a photo stained with her blood. At the police station, Byung Gi told Yu Suk about a strange incident involving Min Jun and his apparent supernatural powers, but Yu Suk believed him. The following day, Song Yi received a message from Min Jun asking her to come to her graduation ceremony at college. However, when she arrived on campus, a journalist named Kim Yuk Su accidentally crashed his car into hers, hoping to interview her. Other journalists surrounded her car, making her afraid to step out. Upon learning this, Min Jun teleported into the crowd to rescue her and warned the reporters to leave or face legal action. Song Yi then claimed Min Jun was her manager. Later, Min Jun took Song Yi to a museum, where she became interested in a hairpin he once gave to Yi Wa. In Se Mi's room, she found a photo of Min Jun, triggering memories of the incident where Song Yi was saved by someone resembling him. In the evening, Hee Kyung invited Song Yi to an amusement park he rented. However, when she arrived with Min Jun, Hee Kyung felt upset and left without saying anything. He then took her on a ride on the Ferris wheel, and from afar, Min Jun could see and hear their conversation. Suddenly, Min Jun remembered how Song Yi was intrigued by Yi Wa's hairpin at the museum, triggering memories of his past. Then, Min Jun recalled how Yi Wa returned the hairpin to him after he ran away from her house. He reminisced about how Yi Wa protected him when they were attacked by people who discovered he couldn't use his powers, resulting in her tragic death. Back in the present on the Ferris wheel, Hee Kyung proposed to Song Yi again. But just as she was about to answer, Min Jun froze time so he couldn't hear her response. When Min Jun arrived at the hill where Yi Wa died, time resumed and Song Yi, about to accept the proposal, changed her mind and apologized. Despite being rejected again, Hee Kyung remained hopeful. Heartbroken, Hee Kyung went to a bar with Se Mi, telling her how Song Yi rejected him, leaving Se Mi upset as she had liked Hee Kyung for a long time. On the flip side, Mi Yun and Yoon Jae visited Song Yi's apartment. Shortly after their arrival, Song Yi received another package containing death threats, causing panic for Mi Yun and Yoon Jae. When they left and met Min Jun in the elevator, Song Yi introduced him as her new manager, which surprised him. After saying goodbye to Mi Yun and Yoon Jae, Min Jun entered his apartment feeling happy. There, he overheard Song Yi and Mi Yun discussing Song Yi's rejection of Hee Kyung. Although Song Yi asked him to be her manager and revealed this to her family, Min Jun initially refused, but he eventually agreed after learning about the threats against her. 
The next day, Min Jun went to the police station in response to a call from Byung Hee and Yoon Suk, who wanted to know his whereabouts during the party on the boat. Min Jun managed to avoid their questions by saying he was in his apartment during the party, backed up by surveillance camera footage from the elevator. After leaving the police station, Min Jun bought a cell phone as Song Yi suggested so they could communicate more easily. Meanwhile, He Kyung is trying to convince his father, Bum Jung, to establish an agency for Song Yi, which annoys Bum Jung, but eventually, he agrees to his son's request. Back at the apartment, while having a meal with Min Jun, Song Yi commented that Sae Mi's drama would not do well, but it actually received high ratings. Another day, Young Mok looks upset with Min Jun for finally agreeing to buy a cell phone after Song Yi's request, even though Young Mok had been asking him to get one for a long time. Meanwhile, Song Yi ran into her former manager, Yoon Boom, who gave her a bag left behind in their old car, which belonged to Yura. While checking the bag at her apartment, she found a flash drive inside and watched its contents. Shortly after, Min Jun came over with food, and while they ate together, they discovered a hidden camera in one of the dolls gifted by Song Yi's fans, raising concerns about someone spying on her. Later, Song Yi met Se Mi and shared her frustrations. There, Se Mi expressed her feelings and admitted she never considered Song Yi a friend. Hurt by this, Song Yi decided to leave and Min Jun followed her. As she almost got hit by an object outside, Min Jun intervened to protect her. At that time, Se Mi, witnessing the incident, felt like she had seen him somewhere before. Then, when Song Yi fainted, she was rushed to the hospital. Meanwhile, Min Jun went to the police to report the man who almost hurt Song Yi. At the hospital, a suspicious doctor injected her with something, causing her to faint again, and then took her away. Later, Min Jun realized his mistake at the police station and hurried back to the hospital, only to find Song Yi missing. He eventually found her alone in a car near a cliff. Using his teleportation powers, he managed to stop the car just in time to prevent it from falling off the cliff. Afterward, he came arrived and took Song Yi back to the hospital for safety. At the hospital, Song Yi told Min Jun she saw him saving her near a cliff, but he avoided the topic. Later, Min Jun noticed a scar on his hand from when he rescued her. Meanwhile, Lee Sin informed Jade Kung their plan to harm Song Yi failed because Min Jun intervened. Back at the apartment, Min Jun treated his wound and heard Song Yi screaming. She returned to find her place a mess. Min Jun suggested she stay at his place until things settled down. Meanwhile, Jade Kyung was with Se Mi and asked her to take care of Song Yi, which saddened Se Mi because Jade Kyung seemed more concerned about Song Yi than her. Se Mi planned to tell Song Yi about Min Jun saving her, but hesitated when Jade Kyung showed disapproval. The next day, as Song Yi was leaving, she found her heels in Min Jun's shoe rack, suspecting he might have a liking for women's things. At that time, Min Jun swiftly changed the subject by discussing the food he brought. Later, Song Yi tried to help clean Min Jun's messy apartment as a thank you for letting her stay there temporarily, but ended up making it messier and breaking an antique jar, irritating Min Jun. Meanwhile, Byung Yi kept investigating Yu Ra's case and found new clues. At the same time, Min Jun looked into the hidden camera in Song Yi's doll and saw a future vision from Yu Ra's flash drive. When Song Yi planned to dine with Jae Kyung, he suddenly asked about the hidden camera in her doll, making her suspicious. To test him, she pretended to have found a video on Yu Ra's flash drive, but she couldn't find it. Later at her apartment, Song Yi invited Min Jun for a drink, and she ended up getting drunk and speaking her mind, even daring Min Jun to stare at her for 15 seconds, which she did before kissing her. This left Min Jun with a fever and a fast heartbeat the next day, worrying Song Yi. Young Mok later found out Min Jun got sick from someone else's saliva during the kiss. Meanwhile, Jae Kyung gets news from Lee Sin about Min Jun, the person who helped Song Yi, and Lee Sin also tells him that the flash drive, likely owned by Yu Ra, is with Min Jun. At the police station, Byung Hee, upon learning that Yu Ra is pregnant, assumes she and Min Jun have a special relationship, leading to an argument with Song Yi. However, Yu Sup finds this assumption too far fetched. Back at Min Jun's apartment, Song Yi shares a childhood story about a man who once helped her. Suddenly, they hear Jae Kyung's voice, making Min Jun confront him in the elevator. There, Jae Kyung threatens Min Jun to hand over Yu Ra's flash drive, but Min Jun warns him back before the elevator closes. As Jae Kyung reaches the ground floor, he's surprised to find Min Jun already waiting for him, and Min Jun retaliates with his own threat. 
On another day, Say Mi, curious about Mean Jun, approached him on campus to learn more about him. When he returned home, he shared the meeting with Song Yi, mentioning Say Mi's concern for her. However, Song Yi didn't believe it and complained, annoying Mean Jun, who then drove her home. On a different occasion, Hee Kyung met Say Mi on set to apologize for not reciprocating her feelings. Say Mi felt sad and gave Mean Jun a photo, mentioning Mean Jun's past help to Song Yi. Hee Kyung was surprised to learn that Mean Jun was the person Song Yi liked, especially upon finding out she lived with him. Then, he immediately asked Song Yi to return home. Annoyed with Mean Jun, Song Yi agreed and began packing, finding broken glass in the trash that reminded her of the man who saved her from the cliff. Meanwhile, downstairs, Hee Kyung runs into Mean Jun and asks if he's the one who helped Song Yi 12 years ago, but Mean Jun doesn't give a clear answer. When Mean Jun returns to his apartment, Song Yi asks about the piece of glass she found, but he dodges the question, suggesting she might be imagining things. Soon after, Song Yi decides to head home. Mean Jun then told Young Mok about Jae Kyung. Their Young Mok warned Mean Jun that Jae Kyung might suspect his true identity. Meanwhile, Jae Kyung instructs Lee Sin to keep an eye on Mean Jun because he finds it suspicious how quickly Mean Jun can reach the ground floor without using the elevator. Aware of Jae Kyung's plan, Mean Jun keeps tabs on him by examining the files on Yu Ra's flash drive, which he took from Song Yi. On the other hand, Song Yi receives notice from the apartment management that she needs to pay rent, but she's out of money. Desperate, she decides to sell her collection of luxury bags. However, when she tries to sell them at a shop, the owner refuses to buy them and treats her poorly. Left, with no other option, she resorts to selling her bags online under Mean Jun's name. At that time, Song Yi decides to seek Mean Jun's help as a lawyer to support her boss in suing the agency for making a fake contract without her permission. Thanks to Mean Jun's clever tactics, they win the case and Song Yi receives compensation. Later, they bump into Say Mi, who tries to grab Mean Jun's attention, irritating Song Yi. Mean Jun quickly takes Song Yi home, where she confesses her feelings for him, admitting she wants to be with him despite her efforts to hide her feelings. Meanwhile, Hee Kyung mistakenly answers a call meant for Jade Kyung, hearing a woman pleading for help, leading him to suspect his brother's involvement. On the other hand, Lee Sin, who has been monitoring Mean Jun's phone, eavesdrops on Mean Jun's conversation with Yoo Suk. Later, Song Yi invites Mean Jun to the balcony and confesses her love for him, but he doesn't respond to her confession. The next day, Mean Jun was supposed to meet Yoo Suk at a cafe to discuss Yoo Ra's death, but Jade Kyung interfered by attacking Yoo Suk before the meeting. Then he tricked Mean Jun into following him. Meanwhile, Song Yi went to Mean Jun's secret room to find him, unaware that Lee Sin was already there. At the same time, Jae Kyung took Mean Jun to a cliff and threatened him with a gun, demanding Yu Ra's flash drive. Fortunately, Mean Jun managed to dodge the shot, then catch Jae Kyung. Back at the apartment, Song Yi sensed someone in Mean Jun's place and called him as she rushed out. Lee Sin, aware of this, tried to break into Song Yi's apartment. On the cliff, Mean Jun, wounded from the gunshot, received a call from Song Yi, informing him of the intruder. Despite his weakened state, he teleported to her apartment, surprising Song Yi with his arrival. At that time, she noticed his unusual body temperature. At the police station, Byung Yi is investigating Yu Suk's assault case. There he discovers Mean Jun's pen deliberately left at the scene by Jade Kyung. The next day, Song Yi cooked and invited Mean Jun to eat together, but he declined and went home instead. While he was out, he bumped into Save Me who was looking for him. This upset Song Yi, who tried to eavesdrop on their conversation. There, Save Me asked about Yu Suk's attack and said she'd find the attacker. Later, Song Yi, unhappy to see Mean Jun with Save Me, followed him around, seeking answers about his feelings. He eventually told her he didn't like her and helped her out of pity, asking her to stay away. Heartbroken, Song Yi continued crying until He Gyeong picked her up. Meanwhile, Mean Jun said those words so Song Yi would leave him alone as he's preparing to leave Earth. Despite this, he actually likes her and kissed her before she left him. Song Yi, heartbroken, got drunk and embarrassed herself in front of Mean Jun once she sobered up. At He Kyung's house, he searches Jade Kyung's room for clues after Mean Jun warns him to protect Song Yi from Jade Kyung's schemes. Meanwhile, Jae Kyung plans to start an agency for Song Yi and threatens Mean Jun using the yawn. At Song Yi's apartment, Save Me arrives to reveal Mean Jun's true identity and her reasons for meeting him. Meanwhile, Mean Jun is on the road, 
following a vision from Yu Ra's flash drive. Unaware, he's hit by a car weakened by his kiss with Song Yi. The driver takes the flash drive he was holding. There, Sei Mi mentions the man who saved Song Yi 12 years ago is near, but Song Yi dismisses it. Thinking Sei Mi wants her to leave He Gyung for the man, despite her not liking Sei Mi. This upsets Sei Mi. Song Yi then leaves Sei Mi and tries to reach Min Jun, who hasn't been answering her calls for a while. Unable to reach him, she goes to his apartment and is shocked to find him covered in blood. Soon after, Young Mok arrives upon hearing the news and warns Song Yi not to get too close to Min Jun, who will be leaving in two months. Meanwhile, outside, He Kyung overhears Jae Kyung's conversation about Min Jun and the flash drive with Lee Seen. Back at Min Jun's, he dreams of spending time alone with Song Yi, which brings him comfort. He Kyung, noticing Song Yi's sadness, tries to comfort her, but she gets upset again when Mi Yan mentions the agency contract from Jade Kyung. Later, Pyung Hee visits Song Yi to ask about Min Jun's involvement in the ship incident, and she finally realizes Min Jun's help. Meanwhile, Hee Kyung continues his investigation of Jae Kyung by searching his brother's room again to find the telephone number of the woman who called Jae Kyung before. The next day, Min Jun wakes up and Young Mok suggests that he stop helping Song Yi. However, Song Yi is seen trying to approach Min Jun despite Young Mok's advice. At the hospital, Yusup wakes up and Byung, he asks him about the pen found at the scene of the attack. They also discuss Jae Kyung's relationship with Yu Ra. After their conversation, they confront Jae Kyung about the incident on the boat. Jae Kyung remembers poisoning Yu Ra and causing her to fall from the ship during a confrontation with Lee Seen, but he keeps this fact hidden. At the talent agency, Se Mi, who landed the lead role in a drama, suggests to the producer that Song Yi should only get a supporting role, hoping to make Song Yi feel the disappointment she once felt. Later that night, Min Jun meets Jae Kyung and offers a deal to get him to leave Song Yi alone. After their conversation, Min Jun invites Song Yi to a museum to reveal his true identity and decide whether they should spend the remaining two months together. Min Jun opens up about his abilities and asks Song Yi if she still likes him. Reflecting on the past, Min Jun used to help people, but they were scared of his powers. Now he wants to reveal his true self to Song Yi so she'll stay away from him. However, when Song Yi knows the truth, she urges Min Jun to seek help, causing him to distance himself from her. Feeling hurt, Song Yi vents her frustration at a star she believes Min Jun resides in. Meanwhile, Jae Kyung is feeling anxious because his relationship with Yu Ra has been exposed, and he even talks to himself as if Yu Ra is present. The following day, Min Jun is still struggling with his feelings for Song Yi, and he's also contemplating confessing to Jae Kyung about Yu Ra's death. At the same time, Song Yi told her best friend, Hong Hai In, about Min Jun's claim of being an alien. However, Haiyan dismisses it as an excuse Min Jun is using to reject Song Yi. Convinced by Haiyan's words, Song Yi tries to test Min Jun's powers by pretending to be in danger and calling for his help. But he doesn't respond. Later at the beach, Min Jun tells Song Yi he doesn't like her. Despite feeling hurt, Song Yi decides not to pursue her feelings for Min Jun any longer. After this meeting, Song Yi appears frustrated with herself. One day, Song Yi talked to Hee Kyung about getting an offer for a drama role and about Jae Kyung, who is Yu Ra's boyfriend. At that time, Min Jun overheard this from his apartment and was shocked to learn this. Later, Hee Kyung went to Jade Kyung's car and checked its travel history after returning from Song Yi's place. Meanwhile, at the police station, Min Jun met Yu Suk and asked him to help trick Jade Kyung. On another day, Mi Yan signed a contract with Song Yi herself, which Jae Kyung arranged without Song Yi knowing, while she was busy rehearsing for her new drama. The next day on the set of a movie, Lee Seen pretended to be part of the crew. He was secretly setting up equipment to harm Song Yi during a dangerous scene. Unfortunately, Song Yi fell from a height and had to go to the hospital. The news spread quickly on social media, and Min Jumin who knew about it, became very upset and went to confront Jae Kyung. A week before the accident, Young Mok was praising Min Jun's skills. Without them knowing, Jae Kyung planted something in Young Mok's bag, revealing that Min Jun might be dangerous. Later, Min Jun and Jae Kyung made a deal that Min Jun would take the blame for Yu Ra's death, so Jae Kyung wouldn't bother Song Yi. Meanwhile, He Kyung visited the woman who called Jae Kyung. He was surprised to find out she was Yang Min Chu, Jae Kyung's ex-wife. In another place, Byung Yi and Yu Suk were trying to find clues about Yu Ra's death, but unknowingly, 
Jake Kyung's men reported everything to him, making it look like Min Jun was the suspect. Byung Hee and Yoo Suk didn't fully believe it because the case seemed too easy to solve. The next day, Song Yi was getting ready to go to the movie set when she bumped into Min Jun in the elevator. Suddenly, she started crying and Min Jun saw her from outside. Feeling upset, Min Jun decided to go to the police station to confess his wrongs so that Jake Kyung wouldn't bother Song Yi anymore. Unfortunately, on set, Lee Sin had messed with the equipment for Song Yi's scene, causing her and Hee Kyung, who was trying to help her, to get hurt. Meanwhile, Min Hu heard about Song Yi's accident and rushed to the hospital to see her. When Min Jun learned about the news, he immediately went to the hospital too. Later, Min Jun confronted Jake Kyung, but Jake Kyung wasn't scared because he knew Min Jun wouldn't hurt anyone. An angry Min Jun pushed Jake Kyung off a ledge, but he saved him just before he hit the ground. There, Min Jun warned Jake Kyung to stop hurting Song Yi. At the hospital, Song Yi finally received treatment thanks to Min Gu donating blood. While she was still unconscious, she had a dream where she called out to Min Gu for comfort. But in reality, she was calling out to him, who was secretly there. Meanwhile, Min Gu stayed by Song Yi's side, making sure she felt better. In another part of the hospital, Se Mi looked sad as Hee Kyung remained in a coma. On the flip side, Min Jun goes back to the police station to reveal his true identity and abilities to Yu Suk and Byung Hee, so they won't doubt him. There he gives them a flash drive containing evidence that could prove Jae Kyung murdered Yu Ra, and asks them to join forces to catch him. Meanwhile, while Song Yi waits for a call from Min Jun, Hai and advises her to stop hoping for Min Jun and to accept Kik Young's sincere love instead. Shortly after, Song Yi visits the still unconscious Kik Young and meet Jae Kyung, who is pretending to be nice to her. During their conversation, Song Yi accidentally reveals that she told Kik Young about Jae Kyung dating Yu Ra. At the same time, Min Jun meets Mi Yan and learns that Song Yi is under contract with Jae Kyung, making him feel guilty. He also hears that Song Yi will be engaged to Kik Young which makes him jealous. Later, Min Jun hesitates to text Song Yi but accidentally sends the message. He then stops Tan to go to the hospital and delete the message from Song Yi's phone. When Tan resumes, Song Yi is surprised to see Min Jun in front of her. Not too long after, Min Jun confronted Jae Kyung in Hee Kyung's hospital room. At that time, Jae Kyung admitted that he would do anything to eliminate people who stood in his way, even his own family. Unaware that Hee Kyung was pretending to be asleep, he overheard this conversation. Later at his apartment, Min Jun imagined Song Yi and Hee Kyung being affectionate after getting engaged. Some time passed and Song Yi finally returned home from the hospital. Despite Min Gu's warning, she decided to continue filming. The next day, Min Jun took Song Yi to the filming location and revealed that he had terminated her contract with Jae Kyung by paying a penalty. He claimed to be her manager, but she refused to accept this. When they arrived at the filming location, Song Yi asked Min Jun to go home. Shortly after, Sadie approached Song Yi and confessed that she had been mean to her out of jealousy. She felt envious when Song Yi got more attention than Hee Kyung, despite Song Yi always rejecting him. Min Jun overheard their conversation from a distance. Meanwhile, Byung Yi, who had gathered evidence, called Jae Kyung for questioning. Bum Jung, visiting Hee Kyung, received the news over the phone. Hee Kyung, still pretending to be in a coma as part of his plan with Min Jun to expose Jae Kyung's crimes, also heard about it. Back at the filming location, Song Yi's scene got postponed until the next day. As she dozed off on set, she woke up to find it empty, except for Min Jun waiting for her. Annoyed, she tried to send him away, saying she no longer liked him. But then, Min Jun used his powers to pull her into a kiss, leaving them both weak. Song Yi took Min Jun home, scolding him along the way. However, when they reached the apartment, they ended up cuddling and falling asleep together, making both of them happy. The next day, Yoon Jae finds Song Yi at Min Jun's house and questions her about it. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Hee Kyung wakes up and pretends to have amnesia by faking an accident in front of his family to protect himself from Jade Kyung's threats. At the police station, Byung Hee and Yoo Suk review Jade Kyung's interrogation video for more evidence. During their discussion, Yoo Suk receives news that he'll be transferred by his boss. Back at Min Jun's apartment, Yoon Jae comes to ask about his sister's relationship with Min Jun. However, he gets fascinated by Min Jun's space binoculars and starts to like him after Min Jun shows him space photos. Hearing that, Yoon Jae also agrees to let Song Yi be with Min Jun. 
Meanwhile, Song Yi visits Gi Kyung at his home after he's been discharged from the hospital. She asks him why he sacrificed for her. He can replies that he'll always be there for her, even if she likes someone else. Back at the apartment, Song Yi sees Yoon Jae praising Min Jun and approving of their relationship. She goes to the balcony to call Min Jun and tries to flirt with him, improving their relationship. They also talk about Young Mok not being Min Jun's father and Min Jun not aging, which worries Song Yi. She immediately starts doing various treatments to stay young. The next day, He Kyung, still pretending to have amnesia, doesn't remember Lee Seen. He investigates how Lee Seen managed to get onto the set. Meanwhile, Min Jun gets annoyed when Song Yi lies to him about a kissing scene at the filming location. When they arrived at the shooting location, Song Yi and Se Mi did an interview as friends, but Song Yi seemed to answer questions without much interest. Before filming started, Min Jun overheard the director and his assistant planning to make Song Yi shoot the same scene multiple times. Despite this, Song Yi remained professional. After filming, Min Jun confronted the director angrily. Later, they enjoyed each other's company, discussing their relationship's milestones. There, Min Jun mentioned he had to leave Earth in a month, so he wanted to do things Song Yi wished for before he left. Hearing this, Song Yi felt sad knowing they might never meet again after he returned to his planet. Overwhelmed with emotions, she left Min Jun and wanted to go home with Se Mi. Back at the apartment, Song Yi saw Yoon Jae and Mi Yan watching news about a comet passing Earth, which made her even sadder. At the same time, Hee Kyung has discovered a clue about Lee Seen possibly harming Song Yi. He's also trying to gather more information from Jade Kyung. Hee Kyung is investigating the death of his older brother, which his mother believes is suspicious. After talking with his mother, Hee Kyung meets Yoo Suk to look into women in a mental hospital. The next day, Min Jun seems to be trying to get closer to Song Yi, but she keeps avoiding him. She sees him chatting with one of his students and feels jealous. To annoy them, Song Yi interrupts their conversation. Later, while they're talking, Song Yi asks Min Jun not to leave Earth. Reluctantly, Min Jun agrees. Yun Mok, sensing Min Jun's sadness, tries to cheer him up by getting him drunk. However, Min Jun's super strength causes a blackout in the city, and he ends up sleeping in Song Yi's room. When he wakes up, he's embarrassed because Song Yi is waiting for him. Mi Yan knocks on the door, making them panic, especially since Min Jun can't use his teleportation powers yet. He eventually escapes through the balcony. One night, Min Jun hears Song Yi's wish, so the next day, he takes her to various places she wants to visit, making her very happy. Meanwhile, He Kyung and Yu Suk manage to bring Min Ju to Jade Kyung with Min Jun's help. Back at the villa where Song Yi and Min Jun are vacationing, Song Yi doesn't want to be apart from him. She panics when he disappears but he reassures her that he's not going anywhere. Meanwhile, Jae Kyung avoid interrogation by Byum Hee and Yoo but Hee Kyung confronts him about their elder brother's death because he's figured something out. The next morning, Song Yi is happy to wake up and see Min Jun's face. When she asks him to lift her with his strength, Min Jun notices that his powers are starting to disappear. After they return home, Min Jun tells Young Mok that he won't return to his planet. Young Mok is worried but can't change Min Jun's decision. That night, Min Jun tries to teleport to Song Yi's apartment after she calls him, but he fails and ends up in the middle of the highway. At the police station, Jae Kyung faces interrogation again about Min Ju's imprisonment for seven years. Accompanied by his lawyer, he argues that there's not enough evidence to arrest him. By the river, Hee Kyung, who has been kicked out by Bum Jong because of Jae Kyung, remembers his oldest brother who gave him a recording pen on his graduation day. He visits Min Ju, who is hiding at Sae Mi's house. There, Minju tells him that Jae Kyung recorded a confession in the pen, admitting to poisoning the drink Hee Kyung served to his oldest brother years ago. Hee Kyung is devastated to learn he was used by Jae Kyung to kill his brother. The next morning, Min Jun finally regains his powers and calls Song Yi, who's trying on wedding dresses with Haiyan. Later, Yun Jae visits Min Jun's apartment to give his blessing. Soon after, he invites Min Jun to meet Min Gu, who also asks Min Jun not to leave Song Yi making Min Jun even sadder. They drink together until Min Jun, unaware, uses his powers in front of Yoon Jae. On another occasion, Min Jun takes Son Yi to Namsan Tower, a place she wants to visit to put a love lock. He then leaves her at the apartment as he has other things to do. While waiting, Son Yi finds Min Jun's diary, which reveals he'll die if he doesn't return to his planet, making her sad. She meets Young Mok to confirm this, 
and he tells her that Mean Jun's strength will weaken the longer he stays on Earth. Meanwhile, Mean Jun meets Hee Kyung, who asked for help to catch Jade Kyung, who killed his eldest brother. At that time, Hee Kyung has prepared evidence. The next day, after Hee Kyung invites Jade Kyung over, Jade Kyung threatens him with a gun, recording evidence. Suddenly, the gun disappears and appears with Mean Jun, who helps arrest Jade Kyung and his men with the evidence. The arrest becomes news, and Jade Kyung threatens Mean Jun and Hee Kyung that Song Yi will drink the poison he prepared. Upon hearing that, Mean Jun stops time and teleports to Song Yi. Unfortunately, she drank the poison, so he rushes her to the hospital. Later, Mean Jun teleports them both, making everyone shocked after their mysterious disappearance. At a peaceful spot, Song Yi was joyful, and they took a photo together. Meanwhile, Hee Kyung goes to Bum Jung to reveal that Jade Kyung killed his elder brother, backed by evidence from a recorded pen. Bum Jung is shocked to hear this. Song Yi and Min Jun seem to have a great time together until the evening, talking about their future. Then Min Jun proposes with a ring he had prepared for a long time. Song Yi is thrilled and asks Min Jun to return to his home planet. Min Jun refuses, determined to find a way for them to stay together. In the city, Byung Hee and Yu Suk are overwhelmed by reporters asking about Min Jun and Song Yi, who can disappear. There are even rumors that Min Jun kidnaps Song Yi. The next day, Min Jun and Song Yi come back to town and find lots of reporters waiting at the apartment. There, Song Yi tries to handle them alone, but soon a policeman arrives to take Min Jun to the police station. At that time, Song Yi wants to stay with Min Jun, but is forced to leave by the police. Luckily, Byung Hee arrives and saves Min Jun from trouble. They teleport home, surprising Song Yi's family. At dinner, they all enjoy a meal together, and it's the first time Min Jun eats with them, feeling like part of the family. The following day, Song Yi heads to the shooting location and asks Di Gyun to accompany her, forbidding Min Jun from coming due to the ongoing news about him. This makes Min Jun jealous and annoyed, especially when He Gyun says he won't let Song Yi go. Later, Min Jun looks unwell, making him return to his home planet soon. When Song Yi finds him weak at home, she panics. But there, he reassures her, saying an alien ship will pick him up in a few days. Meanwhile, Young Mok reads in the newspaper about a comet heading towards Earth and hurries to meet Min Jun. He looks sad, and Min Jun thanks him for something. When Min Jun gets home, Song Yi greets him and gives him a flash drive filled with her memories. Another day, as the comet passes by Earth, they stand on the balcony and Song Yi invites Min Jun to make a wish. Suddenly, an alien spacecraft arrives to take Min Jun home. Before he disappears, Min Jun confesses his love to Song Yi while she's still making her wish. After saying his goodbyes, he disappears, leaving Song Yi in tears. Even days later, she's still heartbroken over his departure. In the courtroom, Jake Kyung faces various charges presented by Yusuk. His lawyer, however, can't defend him because Bum Jung ordered him not to, feeling remorseful for raising Jade Kyung. Now, Song Yi is living at Min Jun's house, and He Kyung is always there to comfort her. Min Jun asked He Kyung to take care of her after he left. Meanwhile, Yoon Jae enjoys the telescope Min Jun gave him and promises to listen to Song Yi. Se Mi tries to cheer up Song Yi when she sees her feeling sad and it works. Later on their 100th anniversary, Min Jun briefly appears at the restaurant where Song Yi is. She thinks it's just her imagination, but Young Mok tells her that Min Jun can sometimes visit Earth, even if only for a moment. At the end of the series, three years later, Min Jun starts appearing more often to Song Yi. During an award ceremony, time suddenly stops except for Song Yi. Suddenly, Min Jun appears, gives her his jacket, and kisses her. Then, he turns back time to avoid causing a commotion. Unfortunately, Min Jun disappears again before Song Yi can say anything. Over time, she gets used to his short visits and is happy to see him whenever she can. The series ends. The moral lesson from this series is even if your crush is an alien who can teleport, Always keep your phone charged cause you never know when they might pop by for a surprise visit.